Miracle-walking God, the one with whom nothing shall be impossible, we worship you today. We thank you that thus far you have helped us. We thank you that if you had not been on our side, by now the world would have forgotten us. We thank you for your mercy that endured forever. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we continue with our study, Father, please speak to us again and perform miracles in all our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we are in going higher, but... 35. Going higher, part 35. And our text will remain 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. 1 Kings 18, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Like we said a couple of Sundays ago, when we get to a certain height in our spiritual development, we want to make sure that we get all the benefits we can from every verse of the scriptures. We, we used to call it digging deep as you are not skimming the surface now. You are looking for hidden treasures in the word of God. And so this is the third Sunday, for example, that we are looking at uh, First Kings chapter 18 verse 41. And we are not anywhere near uh, the end of the story. We have already learned from this passage, this verse, that God is merciful. We've learned that we should be grateful to God. We, we've learned that uh, uh, it is possible for us to hear from God, we've learned that one of the signs of divine prophecies is that they always sound incredible. I want to look at something else now. Uh, what Elijah said is rain is coming. Rain is coming means Dryness is about to be over. What does that mean? After three and a half years, number one, hardship does not have to last forever. 
I want to prophesy to someone that all the problems you have been having went today. Hardship has an expiry date. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, there was a woman with the issue of blood. She suffered for 12 years. But one day, her problems ended. She suffered shame. She suffered agony. She suffered losses, physical, material, mental, almost spiritual. But after 12 years, a day came and I believe someone is listening to me today. Your day has come. In Luke chapter 13, from verse 11 to 17, Luke 13, from verse 11 to 17, there was a woman who suffered for 18 years. Her problem was even worse than that of the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood, her problem was hidden, covered with clothes. Only those who were close to her knew what she was going through. Yes, of course, she had no husband. Uh, she, if anybody came to her talking of marriage, she would have uh, cleverly dodged. But in the case of this woman, she was bent double. Everybody could see the problem from a distance. A problem was not a problem that could be hidden under a beautiful dress. Everybody knew her as a woman bent to double. And she was like that for 18 years. But her day came. Her ship does not have to last forever. Oh, what about the case of the man in John chapter 5 from verse 2 to 9? John 5 from verse 2 to 9. He had been uh, by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. 38 years. A lot of people met him there and left him there. She probably, if, if, if they were voting for leadership in that place, they probably would have made her the leader of those who, who were incurable. But her day came. I mean, his day came. He had failed. He had been defeated. He had been forsaken. When Jesus Christ got to him, he told the Lord, I have no one. Help us had failed. Comfort had flown. But when the help of the helpless came, his hardship was over. And when you read Acts chapter 4, verse 22, Acts 4, verse 22, was talking about a man who was more than 40 years old. It was a man healed in Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 11. Acts 3 from verse 1 to 11. 
he was born lame. <laughs> His problem started before he was born. His own problem started right from the womb. And everybody knew him. Everybody who came to the temple to worship knew him. The beggar by the beautiful gate. But his day came. In the name of the almighty God that I serve. Your day of deliverance will come today. Psalm 30 verse 5, Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, joy cometh in the morning. Rain is coming, that's what Elijah said. And today I'm saying, your day of joy is here. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians 10, verse 13 tells us, in every temptation that will come your way, God makes a way of escape. It does not give you a problem so bad that you can't escape from it. No, 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 no. He creates a way for escape. The hardship, the problem does not have to be there forever. There is a way. There is a way of escape. Somebody said if you look for it, you will find it. I tell you, you have found it the moment you find Jesus. Because he's the way. John chapter 14 verse 6. John 14 verse 6. He said, I am the way. The truth and the life. According to the law of priority, what's uppermost in your mind that you speak first, he said, I am the way. Even before he said, I am the truth. The way of escape from whatever problem. He is even the way where there had been no way before. Exodus 14 from verse 1 to 28. Exodus 14 from verse 1 to 28. When God said to Moses, tell the children of Israel to move forward, it was because he was going to create a way where there was no way before. Have they told you there's no way out of your problem? Rejoice. That problem is ending now. Rain is coming. Hardship does not have to last forever. That's one there. Two, rain is coming means the ground will be wet again. What does that mean? Oh, I saw 55 verse 10. I saw 55 verse 10 says, <laughs> when rain falls, when the ground is wet again, there will be food for the eaters and seed for sowers. Many what? Hunger is about to end. Because in Joel chapter 2, from verse 23 to 26, Joel 2, 23 to 26, he said you should rejoice. Why? Because God has given you rain. And as a result of him giving you rain, there will be plenty of food. You eat, you will be satisfied. And no more shame. I rejoice in my spirit because I know by this particular sermon, God is prophesying to someone. 
You will soon get a job. Your business will soon begin to prosper. You will soon become fruitful. There will be food again. The famine will be over. And there will be seed to sow. When the ground is wet, it gives food for the eater and seed for the sower. And the beauty of that is harvest will soon come. Because according to Galatians chapter 6 from verse 7 to 8, Galatians 6 from verse 7 to 8, the Bible made it clear. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For so a man sows, that's highly also reap. In other words, when rain falls and there is food for eater and seed for sewer, You will now have what you need to sow. And because you are now able to sow, harvest will begin to come. A young man was talking to me the other day and he was talking about how good God had been to him. He said God told him to sow a house. A house in Lagos. That was several years ago. He said he sold the house. And now the harvest has come. And in place of a house, he has an office building that he said, I can't remember, is it 16 or 17 stories tall in the best part of Lagos. It's only God can make it possible. Many of us want to sow, only we haven't anything to sow. But when rain falls, seed will come. And then sowing will become easy, followed by harvest. And then he said, rain is coming, not ordinary rain, but abundance of rain. When rain falls in abundance, dry river beds will become full again. Rivers will begin to flow again. And according to Revelation chapter 22 verse 1, Revelation 22 verse 1, wherever there is river, there is life. That's why you find that Every town, every city, at least as much as possible as I know in my own side of the world, is built around a river. Every settlement. Go and check them out. There's a river there, nearby. I'm not talking of in the desert places, even in the desert places, <laughs> they want to camp around a well. Because where there is water, there will be life. Meaning what? When rain falls and the ground is wet, there will be a new beginning, a new beginning of life. And Isaiah 42 verse 9, Isaiah 42 verse 9, the Almighty God said, hey, former things have come to pass. New things do I declare before they spring forth. Elijah said, hey, rain is coming. That means new things are about to spring forth. In Isaiah 43 verse 19, Isaiah 43 verse 19, God said, Behold, I will do a new thing. And what is the new thing? Rivers in the desert. And 
Revelation chapter 21 verse 5. Revelation 21 verse 5. The Almighty God said, Behold, I make all things new. May I prophesy to someone today and say, From now on, everything in your life will become brand new. Because rain is coming. But we can go deeper still. Just a little deeper still. When rain falls, the heat will be gone. When there has not been rain for three and a half years, nobody needs to tell you, oh, everything will be very hot. When rain falls, things become cool, cool. And what does that mean? When things are cool, people don't sweat. Rain is coming means no more sweating. I mean, you, you know the story. In Matthew 13, from verse 3 to 9, Matthew 13, from verse 3 to 9, a sower went to sow. And some of the sow of the seed fell on, by the wayside, some on, on rocky ground, some among thorns. It's only those that fell in good soil that produce any fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Then you look at Genesis 26 from verse 12 to 14. Genesis 26, 12 to 14. Isaac sowed in the famine. And in his own case, in the very first year, he got a hundredfold returns. That is sweatless success. And he kept on increasing, waxing great, growing, until he became very great. Sweatless effort. It's one thing to work hard. It's another thing to get results that will match your hard work. In Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 7, Luke 5 from verse 1 to 7, we see an example of sweatless success. (laughs) A sweaty failure. Peter fished all night, caught nothing, just sweated for nothing. When the Lord got involved with him, he threw the net once, caught enough fish to fill two boats to sinking level. Sweatless labor. You know all you need in life to be successful forever is just one breakthrough. And you will get that breakthrough today. I mean, that's what God said in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, which is why you can understand why the devil doesn't want you to look in that direction at all. When he said, bring all the ties into my house, and I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, just one. Sweatless success. When the heat is gone, no more sweating. Rain is coming. (laughs) Maybe I should give you just one more on that for this Sunday. And that means no more causes. You say, how can that be in that passage? Ah. When you read Genesis chapter 3 from verse 17 to 19, Genesis 3, 17 to 19, you discover that it is a curse that brought sweating into labor. It is when Adam sinned that God said, all right, from now on, it is in the sweat of your face that you eat. 
This man has been taking care of a garden the size of Lagos State alone. No sweat. Easily. Then seeing came and God said, all right, from now, <laughs> it will be thorns and tissues that will be growing. Up to today. Manure, the land, do everything. Don't plant anything there. Thorns and tissues will grow on their own. <laughs> and when you plant your maize or something, you have still have to struggle with the weeds. No more sweat means no more curse. And according to Numbers chapter 23 verse 8, Numbers 23 verse 8, if God does not curse you, nobody can. As a matter of fact, Numbers 23 verse 20, Numbers 23 verse 20 says, whenever anybody says that you should be cursed, God will replace it with a blessing. Rain coming means no more causes. Get ready for blessings. That's why when it rains, we call it showers of blessings. Showers of blessings. And so for someone today, this very day, your rain will fall. Yeah. Your ground will be wet. Your famine will be over. Amen. You will have plenty of seed to sow. Amen. Your harvest will be great. Amen. Your heat will be gone. Amen. No more sweating. Amen. No more causes. Amen. But there will be showers of blessings. Amen. Now the question is, as I close, how soon can the rain fall for me? It depends on you. Oh, absolutely, it depends on you. Why? Ecclesiastes 11 from verse 1 to 3, Ecclesiastes 11 from verse 1 to 3 says, if you load your clouds, this cloud will soon release rain. If you read it from verse 1 to 3, it tells you how to load your clouds. Give to 6, give to 7. So, just keep on loading your cloud. A big load into the cloud can bring in the rain even today. Rain is coming. But don't forget there is someone who controls the rain. And that's the Almighty God. He said in his word, he said he can rain on one part of the city and keep the other part of the city dry. He said when he does that, this part of the city that has rain will prosper. The part that hasn't got rain will wither. So it all depends on if you are on the side of this God who controls the rain. That's one other big reason why you should give your life to Jesus Christ. I'm crying to you. It's for your own good. Be on the right side of God. Be on that side where rain will fall. Surrender your life to Jesus now. Stop wasting your life. You need the rain. And he controls the rain. So if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, will you please bow your head wherever you are and cry unto him. And say, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of dryness. I'm tired of sweat. I'm tired of curses. I want your rain. I want your refreshment. 
save my soul. Forgive all my sins and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Call on him now. And I will pray for you. I will join my faith with yours. And it will save your soul and everything will become new for you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My Father and my God, I want to bless your name once again for your word. I want to give you all glory and honor for what you have already released into our lives again today. First and foremost, I'm committing all those who are surrendering their lives into your into your hands, Lord. Please receive them. Have mercy on them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Give them a brand new beginning. Write their names in the book of life. And please, Lord, remove every curse from them and replace it with your blessings. Lord, I'm praying for all your children who have listened to me today. Lord, from today onward, let their rain begin to fall. Please, Lord God Almighty, put an end to dryness in their lives. Remove every cause from them and bless them mightily. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ, I rejoice with you. And I want to promise you that from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So please get in contact with me and give me your names, your address, your prayer requests, and I'll be praying for you. And look for a branch of the Redeemed Christian Church of God nearest to you. Go to the pastor there, tell him I sent you. And he will tell you what to do next. God bless you.